All right, what's going on, guys? It is your boy TKD. Want you to be here back again with another video. And of course, we are back here on Friday. That means another installment of Save Slide, the weekly news series where we go over first party and third party news revolving around PlayStation. Now, before we get into any of our news topics for today, just wanted to give a quick shout out to all the content that we put up on the channel this past week. We did some Days Gone DLC coverage as well as a special Cross Circle podcast with my friend at Games Peak Podcast. Be sure to go check out that as well as Road to Part 2 came up this week uh, involving a special guest that is not the Starks, but Starks will be back next week when we get back to a regular schedule. So make sure to go check out those videos and that content if you are interested. Now, we have a first news story here that is revolving around Batman, the Arkham series. Series. I am planning on playing Batman Arkham series here in a little bit coming up as soon as I beat Borderlands 2 the uh, side DLC that they that, that they put out during E3 however Batman Arkham Collection did get confirmed uh, to be a real thing it was leaked and rumored you know a few days beforehand but now we got the official confirmation by Rock City that the collection is coming out for this generation consoles that being the PS4 and the Xbox one and now even though the whole package will include Arkham City Arkham Asylum and Arkham Knight it will not include Arkham Origins unfortunately this is only the Rock City game Games for the Batman Arkham series and all of the PS4 exclusive content like the um, Scarecrow Nightmare missions those will be still exclusive to PS4 so those will not be on the Xbox One version however all the extra DLC that they added to those games will be available on the collection and so it was due to be out sometime in September I believe is what it says I'm not 100% sure on you know like if they've if they've actually said the date but it will be by the end of this year it seems to be coming out on September 6th and so definitely look out for that if you're interested in that um honestly i want to play these a little bit you know around this time and not really wait for the collection so, so that might mean that i'll have to go through ps now to play it but this is something that i could you know take around of we will see whatever i pick uh in the coming weeks next up here of course one of the playstation's biggest games coming up here in the next few years is of course final fantasy 7 remake by square enix a lot of people are anticipating that at a big blowout at this year's e3 a lot of people were definitely enjoying what they've seen from the game and everything however there was a post by uh a xbox official account i, I think it was a german account uh, that claimed that Final Fantasy VII Remake will be coming out March 2020 on the Xbox One, which of course is a bit weird because we've you know seen and even when you go on the PS Store right now, uh, there's a little badge next to Final Fantasy VII Remake that says that it is a PlayStation exclusive game. So pretty interested to see you know how that unfolds uh, from that perspective. However. We got an official, you know, kind of uh, rebuttal and kind of response by Square Enix, uh, where they just pretty much lay it out straight as it is. And they say here, quote, as previously announced, Final Fantasy VII Remake will be released for the PlayStation 4 on March 3rd, 2020. We have no plans for other platforms. And so I guess it was a big slip up on Xbox Germany's side or misinformation, like a mistrans. I mean, I, I don't know what it could be, honestly, but uh, Square seems to be putting it uh, in its place and saying, yo. This is coming out on the PS4 exclusively, so who knows what's happening, but uh, we will have to keep up on this and see if there's anything interesting in terms of this being a timed PlayStation exclusive. I'm not sure. We'll see in the future. Next up here, you all know I'm a big Call of Duty fan, so of course I was all over the gunfight 2v2 streams that they, that they, did, that, that they did this week for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and this is the first time we're actually seeing gameplay and everything, and to me, it looked, it looked interesting. It looks definitely a, a, a lot of changes you know definitely look new to me personally it looks like you know rainbow six and battlefield kind of had a baby and stuff like that but uh you know a lot of people seem to be kind of on it however we will of course probably get a little bit more hype come august 1st where they've announced here on twitter that they will be officially unveiling the entire multiplayer mode and giving us a full look at uh you know the 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 main multiplayer bit of call of duty Modern warfare as opposed to just this specific gunfight 2v2 mode that they showed off this week and so that's when the date's gonna be i'll definitely be covering it i definitely want to see what they have in store for that uh if they do a stream i'm definitely probably just going to stream it here on the channels and you guys can watch with me that'd be cool but uh i'm very interested to see how this all unfolds because uh, while you know we did technically get gameplay you know what i'm saying uh of the 
of the uh, you know gunfight 2v2 this week we didn't get to see any perks really any equipment be used to that extent you know we saw some weapons but I want to see more so I'm just curious to see how regular gameplay uh, in a regular multiplayer rotation will go in terms of like TDM or domination or etc so we'll see how that all unfolds on August 1st now something that I found pretty interesting here was that of course until dawn developers are working on a new IP called the Dark Pictures Anthology with the first episode called Man of Madame coming out here in a few months and of course we are talking about super, we are talking about super massive games here and they you know release some details about the whole entire kind of Man of Madame type deal and honestly it's pretty unclear if they are talking about Man of Madame having this feature or all of the Dark Pictures episodes having this feature however uh, I guess they you know talk you know kind of just in depth about Man of Madame so I guess we'll go over to, go to it from that point of view but it could be a whole chapter dark pictures type of feature but multiplayer will be added to this game now of course this is a very narrative driven game where you're making choices similar to a telltale or a don't nod game and so how co-op will work is that you know your other person will be playing a different protagonist in the same game and so he will go off and make choices and make decisions that will uh, probably affect your choices and your in your uh you know things that you want to say and stuff like that and things that you do on your end of things and they might you know coexist and uh you know affect each other in different ways and so that's kind of how they're approaching co-op which i think is a really, really cool thing and it could add a lot of replayability of course with you know seeing how different things could unfold if you go you know to the bar or go to wherever you know what i'm saying so it could be really cool to see that unfold and so honestly to me it sounds like a really cool idea it sounds like a very unique way also to kind of like bring in a multiplayer to a game like this and so very interested to see how this all unfolds and uh to me it just seemed really cool so we will see how that all comes out when the dark pictures anthology man of madonna episode one comes out in the future now next up here before you know of course what is a save slot episode without some dead stranding Hideo Kojima action here and so it's been pretty cool so I've been on Twitter obviously I'm sure everyone has been on Twitter and everything and if you are looking at Hideo Kojima's Twitter account he's definitely been uh, posting a lot of just really cool string shots from supposed gameplay of dead stranding and so there's a lot of shots of Norman says you know the, the uh, the main character in the game played by Norman Reedus uh, and so there's a bunch of different screenshots that he's posted on Twitter there are a bunch of them also that are black and white so definitely go check out those and I will link his Twitter down below or at least the article that links to his Twitter so you can see that there but the pictures look really really good they look really stunning of course the Stranding running on the Decima engine so of course uh, it's gonna look pretty pretty good if you ask me but just looking at these screenshots the game looks gorgeous and so I and I'm again you know as I said before i am sold on the game i will be playing the game i wouldn't say i'm like over head over heels hype for the game but i will be playing it come this november and uh, let me know if you are too let me know if these screenshots change your mind what do you see from these screenshots that maybe i'm not picking up let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below and lastly here, probably one of my favorite games I saw at E3 2019, and that's kind of, you know, sad to say because, E3, you know, this E3 was kind of, uh, you know, lackluster, one might say. And with that being said, we only saw, like, a pre-rendered trailer that wasn't even gameplay, it wasn't, you know... It, it was just CGI trailer and so uh, you know that has something to be said too but nonetheless even though the trailer was just a CGI thing I did enjoy what I saw from the trailer and the concept of the game and this is coming out on my birthday next year so February 25th get hyped for that we are talking about Gods and Monsters by Ubisoft made by the development team behind Assassin's Creed Odyssey and so they had some details released for this game I'm gonna just read them on screen as they are and you guys can read them along with me over here on the video so it says inspiration for Gods and Monsters came from working on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The team wanted to further explore Greek, Greek mythology without the limits of an Assassin's Creed game. Dr. Stephanie and Rutta, I think that said that right, hopefully, the historian who guided the team on Assassin's Creed Odyssey also happens to be an expert on Greek mythology, so the developer is making use of Reddit skills once again. So that's pretty cool how they're bringing back some of the inspiration from Odyssey to work on this new IP. Gods and Monsters has a more lighthearted approach to storytelling. The narrative unfolds as legendary Greek author homer recounts the tale to his grandchildren oh, okay that's cool okay so that's really the idea where uh the whole story is gonna be kind of a recount 
of stories from the past. So that's pretty cool to see that right there. Combat is fast paced and ability based. The main character Phoenix will need to make use of ability to defeat enemies as well as traverse the environment. Typhoon is the central villain, a particular powerful monster who Zeus banished to the underworld. Phoenix's sex and appearance can be customized. There's also talk of armor and gear, although it's unclear whether gods and monsters will have some kind of loot system similar to Odyssey, so they could be hinting at some RPG elements there, but we'll have to see it when the full game releases or just some more details come out about the game. As well as the last bullet point here is that Phoenix's stats can be also customized so we could see some light RPG mechanics in gods and monsters. And so to me, guys, that sounds like that... that that, that sounds like a very good thing. I personally cannot wait for it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What are you guys' thoughts on Gods and Monsters? Are you hyped for it? Do you not want it to come out? Do you not want it? I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And also, while you are down there, the check out the description where you can find our Discord, our Twitter, follow us on there, as well as our anchor link down below where you can find uh, our links to our different podcast services that we are up on. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Podcasts. You can click that link down below and find the link that, the link that you're looking for uh, to your favorite podcast service that you use, and you can subscribe to the PlayStation Source podcast feed down below through that link. And so, thank you all for watching. If you all enjoyed this episode, save slot, make sure leave a like on the video as well stay subscribed to PlayStation Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Thank you for watching and as always, greatness awaits.